Hey guys, this is Josh here with Trillium Wild Edibles, and today I want to start a video series on poisonous plants. In this video today, we're going to cover anywhere from two to three poisonous plants, and I'm going to try to do that for each video. Now the plant that we're looking at here is the notorious poison ivy. This plant is extremely notorious for causing a lot of burning and itching with the rash that it causes on a lot of people. And the reason for that is the essential oils within this plant is what causes the rash. Now if you're highly allergic to it, you're going to develop this rash just by touching the plant. Now I'm not allergic, so don't freak out. Not a big deal. Now when it comes to identification of poison ivy, that can be sometimes a little tricky. The reason for that is because there are a lot of variations within the leaves of poison ivy. Sometimes they can even resemble poison oak to some people, and sometimes poison oak can resemble poison ivy. So depending on where you live, you want to make sure that you're aware of poison oak. In Indiana, where I'm at today, there's not a lot of poison oak in this area, so I don't have to worry about that. However, we are going to continue to talk about poison ivy. You may remember that essential oil that I was talking about, and it's called toxidendrol. And that is the oil that, like I said, it seeps in through your skin and it causes a rash. Anywhere, like if I were to get it on my hand, you see this bright, red, puffy, itchy, rashy, you know, it, it just looks horrible. And it itches like crazy on a lot of people whenever they get it. Now as far as actually identifying this plant, first and foremost, where does it grow? This plant grows everywhere. I usually find this plant a lot of times on the edges of wood lines, like you can see here. Sometimes you can find it on the edges of clearings even. This plant will grow, like I said, almost anywhere. This poison ivy isn't growing anywhere near trees. So that's another thing to keep in mind is you can find it sometimes up against trees and moist areas and low-lying areas. You can find it up on high grounds. You can find it in fields. You can find it in clearings, on the edges of them, on the edges of roadsides, around telephone poles and utility poles. These things just grow anywhere and everywhere they can. And this is just another example of this. Now something you may see that's very noticeable on poison ivy, or at least a lot of the kind that I'm showing you here, is these red tinged stems. That's something I notice on a lot of the poison ivy I see within the state of Indiana, and usually in most other places that I've been within the eastern United States. However, you may be different because this plant, like I said, has a lot of variation to it. But there you can see that red tinge there, and it goes all the way up the stem. You can see it's really dark there at the base of the three leaflets where the stem divides each leaflet. So that's something else to keep in mind whenever you're looking to try to identify poison ivy around your home. There are several variations to poison ivy. There's the ground growing version like you see here, and there's also a climbing version. So be aware of that. Whenever you're going to identify poison ivy, you want to make sure that you see three sets of leaves. You can see these three leaves. These are individual leaves. These aren't leaflets. These are individual leaves. Now you're going to notice a lot of variation with the teeth-like structures or these lobes as I like to call them on the margins of the leaves. You can see just how different each side of just this one leaf is. And if we go to another leaf on the exact same plant, the one right behind it, here along this one margin we don't see any teeth or lobes really. We see one little bitty blue right there. But here on this other side, we see these two major ones, and then that's it. Whereas if we look at the leaf on this one, we can see just how different it looks. I mean, it kind of looks almost like a poplar leaf, if you will. It's kind, of, it's kind of different. It's very unique. So the leaves don't really have any distinct structure to them at all that really makes them stand out, except for the distinct three leaves, which you can see here. Each one of these leaves can grow to be several inches in length and a couple inches in width. This is usually about the largest I see them where I live, however they can get a little bit larger. Now anywhere you find adult poison ivy, you're going to find young poison ivy because this plant spreads like wildfire. And I'm using that term figuratively because it just spreads like crazy, man. However, in a general sense of the term, the leaves are lance-shaped or ovate with a sharp point. It really kind of depends on the leaf that you find. See, like this one I would describe as lance-shaped with a lobe. However, this one I would describe more as ovate with a point because it looks more like an oval that comes to a point. And then it, of course, has these lobes which are going to be varied on whichever leaf you're looking at. Poison ivy is a woody-like vine, as you can see here, this woody-like stem right here. And the downside about that is that's one of the things that actually makes it really hard to kill is because it's a woody plant and its root system is what you need to get rid of if you want to get rid of it at your house. 
Here's an example of how prolific poison ivy can really grow. All that you see there at the end of my boken, all of that is poison ivy. All of it. You can see all those leaves are starting to change color. You're seeing a lot of specks, a lot of yellow, some reddish tints. All of that is poison ivy. There are a few plants in there that aren't poison ivy, but for easement's sake, that is all poison ivy. All right, and the second plant we're gonna talk about today is Virginia creeper. You can see this palmate leaf here with five leaflets, all with teeth along the edge or the margin of the leaf. A lot of people end up confusing this plant with poison ivy, and some people have confused it with poison sumac, just because, well, a lot of people aren't exactly sure which is which sometimes. Now, poison sumac is a tree, and it looks nothing like this. However, this is a poisonous plant still. Now later in the summer and the fall, this plant actually produces berries as well that sometimes are growing intermingled with wild grapes and their color is very similar. So a lot of people sometimes confuse these with wild grape berries. And here you can see this Virginia creeper running up the trunk of this tree. And that's exactly what this plant will do is it'll just climb up things and it doesn't cause any damage. It actually works by these little suction cup suckers that you can see there. And a lot of people actually use this plant ornamentally to help shade the sides of buildings because it doesn't cause any damage to the masonry or the stonework. So that's something to keep in mind if you actually feel like using this plant. It's not harmful if touched, though some people have an allergic reaction to it when they do touch it. That's very, very rare. Most of the time you're not going to have any issue at all with this plant until you choose to eat it. Which you should never choose to eat it because it is poisonous. Now the berries contain very high amounts of calcium oxalate. And this plant, all plant parts, contain a lot of oxalic acid and calcium oxalate crystals. So be aware of that. And if you're very, very sensitive skinned, sometimes just by crushing a piece of the plant, which I'm not going to do because I, temp I tend to be very sensitive skinned, there are a lot of very sharp microscopic needle-like crystal structures within the inside of this plant that can cause some itching and sometimes rashing or burning sensation within some people. So make sure you're cautious of that. This is one plant that I actually can't handle very much. I have never crush it. I can always pick it and hold it like this. But I've never been able to crush it without getting some sort of itchy feeling. It never lasts in me for too long, thankfully. Though I've heard with some people it can actually last for a couple of hours. And they've kind of likened it to similar to poison ivy, just not as bad. And I think that also might be why some people confuse this with poison ivy. However, another reason for that might be just because right here you can see some climbing poison ivy vine. And I can tell this because again it has these very distinct three leaves. Now again, remember what I said, the leaf shape isn't once distinct. It's the fact that it has three individual leaves. Not leaflets, it's not growing on the ground. The leaves have a lot of variation within them and they can get to various sizes. You may also notice this red, oh you can't see it. You may also notice this red or purplish tinge at the petiole, or the base of the stem in the leaf, like you can see here. And here you can see the very woody stem of poison ivy growing up along this tree trunk. Now another thing that's growing up along the same tree intertwined with this poison ivy is that Virginia creeper. So that's another reason that some people may confuse these two. However, they are completely different plants. They're not related in any way. And poison ivy is much, much worse to more people than Virginia creeper. Virginia creeper is more of a worry if you are foraging for wild grapes or if you're very sensitive skin and end up having to pull it and it does cause that itching or that burning or a slight rash. That's the only thing to really worry about with this plant. And here you can see these two growing together and it looks almost as if they're one vine. Until you get up close and personal, and a lot of people won't because if they think anything's poison ivy, they usually just stay away anyways. They don't get near it, which is good. That's good, they're doing it for their own safety. However, we can see the two very different wood-like structures here. And that's because these are two different, two completely different vines and two completely different plants. However, they are both poisonous, and they do both climb up long trees like you can see here. Alright, so the next poisonous plant that we're going to talk about today is poke or pokeweed. Now this plant kind of works both ways. It is edible, and it is supposedly medicinal as well. However, it is also highly poisonous if used improperly or if the toxins aren't dispelled before consuming. So make sure you're aware of how to use this plant whenever you do try to eat it. The only edible part of this plant to my knowledge are the young shoots whenever they're under six inches in the early, early spring. Other than that, like in this stage right now, 
This entire plant is extremely deadly poisonous if consumed. This time of year it's very hard to mistake poke for anything and it's a very easy poisonous plant to identify. Thankfully because of how tall that it grows. Here you can see a close up of the berries and some of the flowers on pokeweed. You can see how they grow in this like a spike or a raceme that hangs away, it droops away from the leaf axles. You can see here's the axle of the leaf on the stem and you can see here's the spike or this raceme coming out with the flowers and some berries. Here you can see a very very small raceme of flowers and berries getting ready to come out here out of this leaf axle. Whenever these berries start they start off white and then they turn to their dark purplish color. They go from white to red to purple and then to a black and then they start to dry out at that point. Now the deer absolutely love to eat these berries so if you're a hunter and you find a lot of pokeweed somewhere might be a good spot to set up because you know the deer are going to be there eating. The stem of pokeweed almost always in my experience is fully red usually on one side sometimes the underside as you can see here is green. You can see this division between the two colors right there very very well. So that's something that's very unique to poke in my experience. Poke has a very very thick stem that looks like it's splotched with pink or purplish like you can see here running up and down. The stem is very stiff. It looks like it'd be soft and it kind of is. You can dig into it with your fingernail really easily just like you can see there. You can just simply take your thumb and break it just like that. So it's very easy to get rid of and of course it's an extremely noxious weed so I'm not hurting anything by doing that. Now the leaves of poke are very simple. They're lance shaped. They're kind of long and you may notice that they're smooth along the edges or the margins of the leaves meaning that there are no teeth, there are no lobes. You may also notice that the leaves on pokeweed will alternate. You'll, wherever you see one leaf you'll then see another one growing up and then they will continue to alternate all the way up the plant. However in some cases you may get out of a node you may see another stem rising out that'll give way to new leaves and you may sometimes find those opposite of where you see leaves, a leaf, or a stem that's going to make new leaves. So that's something else to keep in mind is that more stems can come out of each node on this plant and create more stems which will each have more leaves. And here right on the ground right in front of all that poke you can see a whole bunch more of this poison ivy. So that's something else to keep in mind that sometimes you're going to find a lot of poisonous plants right next to each other. So I thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If you want to learn more about edible or medicinal plants, make sure to subscribe.